Hey guys, I'm Sai, and welcome to Ace Podcast Nation, the home of the Andy Campbell Football Show. This is episode number 94. The show is available live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, uh, Ace Podcast Nation. Also, you're home to many other great shows and series featuring top guests, expert analysts, and more. So please follow us on social media, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and uh, if you want to streamline your content for just football stuff, you can follow uh, the football shows at AC Footy Show on basically every social media platform. And uh, if you prefer your podcasts in audio format, you can download all the shows in uh, raid all your favourite radio or podcast apps and platforms. Just uh, search for Ace Podcast Nation or the Andy Campbell Show, indeed. Um, so just as we wait for the various platforms to fill up with uh, a few people in the different bits um a big thank you to black diamond sports global sports agency who represent sports stars from around the world uh for more information you can visit their social media pages and indeed their brand new website uh links to all are in the description below as well as the closing credits at the end of the show and a sponsor for today's show is uh, as usual bespoke financial and uh, a big thank you to them and darren ralston and uh, we'll have a quick word from them my mummy and daddy have been talking about life insurance. It sounds like something to protect my brother and me, but I don't really understand. Then my auntie Louise told mummy about Bespoke Financial Teesside. She said they're a local company who helped her with her life insurance. Mummy got in touch and because they're based locally, a man called Darren was able to come to our house. He was really friendly. Darren stayed for a cup of tea and made it all really easy to understand. He said that life insurance will protect our home and family if anything bad were to happen. Like if mummy or daddy got sick, then we'd get enough money to take care of us and our house would be paid for so we wouldn't get taken away. After an hour, Darren said goodbye and mummy and daddy seemed a lot happier. Once it was all sorted, we could all relax and watch a film together as a family. I don't know why they didn't do it sooner. Bespoke Financial specialise in life insurance, critical illness, income protection, mortgages and sports cover. Uh, we thank them for sponsoring the show. And uh, Darren Ralston of Bespoke Financial at the moment is giving away a free will with £140 with every new policy which is taken out. Uh, so please check them out. Uh, check out the social media. Give them a call. Their, their numbers in the closing credits at the end of the show. And uh, don't miss out on that because it's an amazing offer. They, As I've said before, they provide award-winning service. They're uh, top of their field. And uh, we are very, very proud to partner with such a top-class brand. Uh, and with no further, 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 put my teeth in, further ado, I am joined as usual by the goal collector himself, the king of the Millennium Stadium still. He is David Jones' favourite son. He is the king of the Old 40s League. It's goal machine, speed demon, I don't know what, what else to say about the man. Ex-Middlesbrough and Cardiff City striker, Mr Andy Campbell, welcome. Good evening, my mate, how are you? I'm alright, buddy, I'm alright, buddy. I, was, I, was, I thought I'd going to keep saying stuff and keep saying stuff until I was waiting for you to interrupt me because I thought I was wondering how many times, how no, many different uh, things can I say before he jumps in? I'm super excited tonight because, uh, as, as, as I've always said, we, this is the third female guest we've had on, third female footballer, um, and it's an opportunity for me to get more of an insight, you know what I mean? It's more personal for me because, uh, obviously, uh, one of my daughters plays football at a decent, she's still in school, but she's due to leave soon, so now I'm really excited to see it, um, see another opinion from a, a, another level and a very high level, you know? Um, we've had uh, some other top guests on and... Um, this uh, our guest, our guest uh, has got an amazing accent, by the way. It's uh, it's it won't be all, won't be all straight away, so I can't wait to uh, delve deeper into the football as well. Indeed, absolutely. And tonight's guest is uh, former West Brom and current Coventry United ladies midfielder Fran Orthodoxu. Welcome, Fran. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. Thank you. How are you? All good. All good. Um, so, Fran, what we like to do uh, just to let the the viewers get a little sort of taste for your your tastes, your interests, is we do uh, something called the Magnificent Seven, which is basically seven quick-fire questions. Just say the uh, the first the first thing which comes to mind, and with some of them, you can, of course, give a, a little example or an anecdote, if you so wish. Uh, but let's go. Okay. 
Okay, for an orthodox who, the Magnificent Seven. Uh, Messi or Ronaldo? Uh, Messi. Favourite TV show? EastEnders. Oh, funniest, funniest teammate? A TV Davis. Angriest teammate? Uh, probably me. <laughs> <laughs> um, laziest trainer? Uh, Rear Aldemore. Oof. No hesitation in any of these. I like well, this is this is proper quick fire questions. I don't uh, know. She was quite nice with herself, or giving herself the angriest one. That's always. I know. I, well, is it is it nice? Is it being like? Well, I'm, I'm, intimi I'm intimidated now though because no, I'm quite no, scared no. of what's, what's coming ahead. <laughs> um, last couple is uh, Megan Rapino or uh, Ada ha Hagerberg. Uh, Hagerberg. Yeah. Good answer. Good first female to win uh, the the it's not called the Ballon d'Or is it the Ballon Femi mm. I think more of an attitude more of an attitude thing for me as well like one's uh, yeah. one's extremely high um, high opinion one's, a, one's, one's an arsehole one's not mate, well basically yeah, yeah he took the word out of my mouth yes. uh, greatest English woman who's ever lived doesn't have to be football related Ooh. I like that uh, Karen Carney oh yeah good answer what a shout that is Good straight answer. away. Doing Do you know what? And then it's my favourite Magnificent Seven because it's quick fire questions. So that's why I like bang, 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 quick, quick answers, no hesitation. That's the way it should be. I like it. On that then, Fran. On, on that note, with the, with the answers that you've just given, then so obviously you're very uh, driven by football. Then you know what I mean with your answer there because you can always tell by that answer alone how. How people are, are driven, how people's thought process goes, you know. So, has, has football then played a huge impact in your life? Yeah, of course. Ever since um, I was really young, actually, I was a blue supporter, a Birmingham supporter with my grandparents. I used to. Oh, I feel, I'm, I'm really sorry for. You. I feel really sorry for you, but <laughs> we can't all be we can't all be Middlesbrough fans and Cardiff fans, can we, say? Well, that's it. It's not all blessed. Not all blessed. <laughs> Obviously, you spoke there about uh, about playing for a boys team. You know what I mean? Because um, Obviously, the the age the age changed, didn't it? Not so long ago, and, and it yeah. was increased to um, uh, I think till about fifteen, sixteen in senior schools that you can play schools football competitively. Oh, I, don't know, I don't know about junior football. But is that schools, the same on a Saturday? Because in no, in no. Uh, in Wales, I think I'm right in saying it's up till year seven, so like under twelves, yeah. And then the girls have got schools, to go and play out of schools in schools that can play within the school jurisdiction so schools were 16 so i when i worked in secondary school um mm. we had uh, we had a couple of year 11 girls who were uh better than the boys i'm not gonna i'm not gonna come in and, and, and say any different you know that and what was holding them back was was confidence was uh, i'm not playing on my own you know what i mean so luckily enough they had two who, 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 who both were better than the boys so they got got accepted which is out of order by the way um yeah. but it made it easier with obviously my background in football that that, that when you when you're picking a team and you're naming the team when your best players a girl, it doesn't really matter for me. You know what I mean? I'm allowed to pick girls, I'm allowed to pick boys, but you know what I mean? It's a shame I couldn't have done it the other way around as well because we, we, we had a great team, mixed team, you know what I mean? But it, yeah. just, it's just a shame it was, you know what I mean? It, it, was, it wasn't taken as serious by everybody, and I mean sex at the time, you know what I mean? Whereas the competitiveness, you know what I mean? And Fran will probably tell you more than I do, but you know what I mean? Some people uh, can go over the top a little bit, and you know what I mean? Have you ever, have you ever witnessed that, Fran, from a personal um stage that people can be over competitive that you're a girl and they don't take you probably as serious as what they should do um i guess at first sometimes at school uh the question as to like why you're so into the football if nobody else is into it um as females are speaking but the more they learn and they're around to that like you really are committed into doing this and you, you're good at it you want to develop and you're playing for proper girls teams then they're like oh hold on a second like, you're actually better than me, and you're actually showing me up, kind of thing. So your development, um, then. Sorry, sorry. Go on, go on. I was just gonna. I was just gonna ask the question. Do you think that generally, like girls, the where they play with the boys to a certain age, whatever that age is in their area, do you think that helps their development, 
because obviously overall there's more boys which play football so the standard might be a bit stronger and boys are a bit physically stronger at, you know at young ages particularly do you think yeah. that helps yeah definitely like when i was at um blues we used to play um some boys team to try and kind of like match that physicality get the speed of the game increase and i know it happens across a lot of the women's clubs now like in england and abroad so it's just kind of developing players more quickly with the uh, high speed and the tempo of the men's game so for people then who are watching the show would you you're obviously then a big advocate for playing with boys. You know what I mean? Is is is, is that been like a huge influence in your development? You know what I mean? Your physical development, yeah. probably your mental development. And then did you did you see how how much it helped you um, going back to the girls' football? Yeah, I guess playing for the boys team has uh, I'd say shaped me into the play around today. If you watch me play, I'm, I'm a very ratty player, and I'm not uh, scared of like getting uh, digging deep. And I've got that from the boys going to prove myself and. Uh, stuff like that. Whereas the women's game is a bit laid back. Mm. Um, yeah, so I would suggest anyone, who, anybody that's watching, to even if you're playing for a girls team, you're still eligible to play for a boys team. Play for both because you'll get developed even more. Mm. I've I seen that first hand with my daughter because I, I watched my daughter play uh, at various age groups. And um, and I think the first time I probably noticed it uh, was apparent was was when somebody did a, a, a bad tackle. It was a bit late tackle on her. Um, she, played, she was playing fullback at the time. and. And the first thing that the the opponent did is pick her up. You know what I mean? Where I didn't want that. I just wanted that. Yeah. You know what I mean? To just to, just to feel that um, that feeling of being kicked on the floor and and, and being yeah. hurt or being you know what I mean? And someone wanting to beat her. You know what I mean? Because that's what football is. At the end of the day, it's a yeah. competitive sport. And you, but like it all, lumpy. You know what I mean? You're gonna get hurt sometimes. You know what I mean? If you put your yeah. head or your body in on in the line, on the line, it's just it's one of those things. It's one of those things. What's gonna happen, isn't it? Yeah, you've got to learn to be knocked down and then have the attitude to get back up and go yeah. again. No, oh, fabulous. Well, yeah, I guess all the players in... around the world have got that, though, haven't they? All the best players in the world have got that thing. We talked about it with Maradona the other day, mate. Um, yeah. And like Ronaldo, Messi, all all the best players have that mentality where they'll keep getting fouled or kicked, but they just keep getting up and they keep wanting the ball. And I think if you can get that from a young age. Hmm. But I think, that, I think that I, I think that only helps so because women's football is, you know, what I mean, and, and it's only probably recent years with the lionesses doing as well as the halves that they're getting that uh, stigma, they get that uh, publicity. You know what I mean? That the the women's football show is live on BBC One, the highlights. Um, you're getting live games on um, BT. Obviously, the the West Ham um, uh, series, uh, which followed them through all the way through COVID and pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely fantastic, you know, and it gave you an insight about about what it is to be a professional footballer at the women's level and the standard. And you know, everyone goes on about uh, Man United, Man City's, Chelsea's, etc., Arsenal's, but there's some very good sides, you know what I mean? And people getting um, people earning a good living from it, you know. So it's a uh, it's a it's a really important thing, you know. What I mean, if you're good at something, then you follow your dream, don't you? And, and, and go as high as you can, you know. And I know we're going to dig deep in there into Fran's career and certainly a move which he's, which he's just recently had. But um, but it's important to keep that progression. You know, that I, I didn't leave the football clubs that I left um, because I didn't like it. You know what I mean? I left there for progression. That might be playing more games. That might be playing for a better club. It might be, you know what I mean? It's all about being the best footballer you can be uh, for as long as you can be because football doesn't last forever. You know what I mean? People tell me about playing as, playing as, as long as you can. And, you know what I mean? I retired and then... I, Started playing again, and it was it was important for me because it's the only thing I've ever known. And you know, selfishly, it's uh, it's the best sport in the world, and it's, uh, I'm a huge advocate to, for everybody to try and play as long as you can. Yeah. Um. So let's uh, let's start with a bit of any other business and two quite um quite serious topics, which is not always the case, uh, Andy. No, I'm not sure when one we of them uh, is serious. It is serious. Well, we, it is. It, it I think it's serious it. for the guy, isn't it? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Let's start with um, that one. Let's start with that one. Yeah, I'm going to go prepare myself for this, mate. <laughs> because what did I say when I when I um, texted you Saturday night when I read the story? I was fuming. And I, 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 I've had a Skype call with my dad today, uh, obviously, because we're... Obviously, still not allowed to see each other uh, for obviously COVID reasons and stuff. So I, um, I told him about the story which we're going to talk about. I know he's in the group chat because he's asked Fran a question for later on, but um, he just couldn't believe it. And I just think it's, it's just it's amazing. Just, it's I amazing. can feel my blood pressure going already. <laughs> so right, <clears throat> so right, hang on. Um, BBC Lincoln uh, have suspended uh, pundit Steve Thompson. Um, 
who's a former former professional player, I believe. He's uh, yeah, he played it? at a de- decent level, didn't he? Yeah, he so did. um, it's not Stephen Thompson who used to play for Cardiff. It's different Stephen Thompson. But um, so basically, he was commentating on a on a match. Um, it's, it's, I can feel it going already. Um, he was commenting on a match. There was um, a, quite a bad tackle. It was a League One match between uh, Accrington Stanley and Lincoln City. Finished nil nil. Uh, there was like a bad, bad t- challenge. The players got up. They had a bit of a argy bargy. Nothing serious. No, no, no. Uh, no punches were thrown. No, you know, usual stuff. Got broken up. He described it during his commentary as handbags. He was then because apparently people, com- some people complained. I don't know how many. Some people. Um, maybe just a person. Com- someone complained that it was uh, not an appropriate way to describe it. It was uh, an old term which was sexist. Um, so my point is, so he's been suspended until the new year. Number one, if I was him, I would not go back and work for the BBC um, or certainly BBC Lincolnshire because I think it's absolutely ludicrous. Number two, that phrase is so common that it's, it, it, it appears in the Collins Dictionary. Like, it's in the dictionary as that exact, ex- pretty much exact example. It's the, the definition of it is an incident in which people, especially sportsmen, fight or threaten to fight, but without real intent to inflict harm. So that's the definition of it. That's what he described. That's what it is. So he's done nothing wrong. He's used an appropriate term <laughs> from the dictionary. Yet yeah, this man's been suspended from his job. <laughs> It's a, good, it's a good rant. This this is a good rant. I admit, this is a I, good rant. This is a good. I rant. didn't even didn't even swear. This like, is a good rant. You're you doing can't. Very well, by the way, you're doing very well. Someone can't. Rant. I would love someone if someone could tell me why he's been suspended or why it's offensive or why, just why. I'd be I think, amazed. I, I think so. I think I think uh, we've we've got. And you know what? And, and and this this is just timing's probably impeccable, really well as this because we've got the perfect guest to give uh, a woman's opinion and a football opinion of. What people would call it, because for me, uh, you know, I mean, what? Listen, we're all equal, you know what I mean? And and uh, we've we, we'd, we'd, we've gone through uh, the turmoil, you know what I mean, and the problems that we've gone through with Black Lives Matter, you know what I mean, with with, with racism and stuff, and we're all trying to be united together with uh, with race and culture, you know what I mean? So sometimes people make a problem when there's no problem, and that's the issue I've got. Um, <clears throat> whoever's decided to complain, surely they have more things to complain about. One. <laughs> B, the BBC have took that serious, which is another problem in itself. You know they should I mean? have a backbone, mate. You know what I mean? Because Shouldn't surely, they? surely there's, 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 there's something happens, somebody's said something, somebody's done something every week, because it's, it's live radio. People say things in, in jest, in passion, in, just in the, in the spirit of the moment. So for me, I just think it's ludicrous and laughable, um, but serious at the same time. So it's like, it's trying to get that fine balance, isn't it? Because... We're laughing, and I'm laugh- I'm smiling a little bit because I-, I think I think it's like a, a little bit of humour. You're boiling, and then someone's lost a job, which it's not right, is it? You know what I mean? So, uh, Fran, what what's your take on it? You know what I mean? So, or what would you call it if um, if you got into an altercation? Let's call it with um, a player at the weekend, and no th- no punches were thrown. It wasn't a fight, but it was something. What would you call it? <laughs> I'm not sure, but the way he's gone, gone about it, um, I know that it just wasn't that one comment. Apparently, it was obviously the scuffle between the two players with the handbags. And then he said that the, um, I think that the referee was in it. And they referred to a player as being a bit of a drama queen. He mm. better be wearing a skirt. I uh, see. We've heard a lot of uh, remarks like that. It, well, as a woman's footballer, it actually just makes, makes you laugh now because... Mm kind of like the same thing as going to you're going to a restaurant and a hotel bar and all the chefs are men pretty much but then people say they remark women belong in the kitchen but like people need to realize mm. now it's the 21st century like yeah. no jobs are specific now great answer specific genders um the world's evolved and these people just need to keep up um, great answer great answer yeah Is i, I... Of... fran spoke earlier on about um about her being better than boys in school i spoke about girls being better than boys in the school that I was teaching in. You know what I mean? It's so important that, that people realise it's not about sex, it's not about age, it's not about race, it's not about anything. It's about ability. And 
you know what I mean? And, and you know what I mean? Fran said that that she's finding some of them comments like quite laughable. They are serious comments at the same time. So we're not, you know, we're not laughing at the comments. The comment for me, it's probably a, a, a terminology of, you know what I mean? That, that, uh, that he thinks that that player's not good enough to wear the, wear the shirt of his club. Come out and say it then. You know what I mean? For me, grow a backbone mm. yourself at times. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's, there's a way to go about things, but then also the BBC also, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying the BBC because it's BBC Lincoln, so it's a different, it's a different thing altogether. You know, it's like BBC T's when they're here with the radio here, which I listen to some sometimes with some games. So it's it's uh, it's important that, that, that they all sing off the same steam sheet because when things get said in in a game, because you say what you see, you know what I mean? And a lot more people are, what, are listening to the games because because they're not live on TV and fans aren't there. So, you know what I mean? You're going to get a lot more viewers or listeners, you know what I mean? To the TVs. It might have been live on TV. I don't know. I, I don't know, obviously, how, how, how they do it at the minute with uh, with links and stuff. But for me, I just I just think, just 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 look at the bigger picture for me. It's just a weird one. I don't really understand, like, why people get so upset, so upset that they feel like they've got to get and, um, and complain to the like whoever whether it's the bbc or whoever like something like so upset them so much like over it i agree by the way i agree completely with everything which fran said um it was just the two reports which i read about it because i only read i admittedly i only read a couple of the news reports and in but i just checked again and both reports only mentioned the hamburg the handbags comment which is why i was so fuming because it's like a it's in the dictionary and blah blah blah, and it describes it perfectly. Whereas the other stuff, I that's where I'd like, yeah, well then there's a bit more to it then, isn't there? And there's there's it's kinda like yes, twenty twenty well nearly twenty twenty one. Get with the times a bit. But ultimately I just don't understand people who've got enough time to complain about stuff which mm. really probably doesn't affect them. And let's be real the people who complained, they probably weren't offended. They just like complaining. Um, and the second bit of any other business is um, is definitely more serious. Is uh, <coughs> basically we saw David Luiz and uh, Raúl Jiménez Jiménez have a horrific uh, collision of heads. And um, I got to say uh, to both of you, but I just I could not believe that David Luiz was allowed back on that football pitch. I think that's like, we. there's so much to learn about concussions um, still, but we know enough over the last probably five to six, seven years that that's not a good idea to be going straight back out after having such, um, such a, a big collision of heads. Whether the player says he's all right or not is by the by it's got to be up to the doctor the coaches to say no you've had a big head you know a collision of heads you cannot go back on that football pitch because head injuries are so complicated um i fell off a wall just very quickly i fell off a wall um about 15 years ago i'd had a few beers and i, I just toppled back and fell off like a six foot wall landed on my head felt fine um and it was only like four five days later that I started getting really bad concussion symptoms like you don't know like just because you feel all right straight after doesn't mean that you haven't done any lasting damage doesn't mean you haven't done any short-term damage and I just think the amount of medical professionals and technology and and the, the facilities available to profess Premier League football clubs come on we got to do better than that um and also, Raúl Jiménez suffered a fractured skull. Um, he's had surgery, so obviously, you know, we wish him all the best because uh, mm. that's frightening stuff. Yeah. Um, well, we'll talk about the concussion subs and the pro protocols in a minute. But just off that initially, uh, Fran, we'll go to you first this time. Like, what do you make of that, uh, Dave David Louise going back on and and what I just said, really? Uh, well, when it's like the both players are both clouded, uh, both went for the ball. Um, David Luiz, obviously, there was blood, uh, they covered his head off. But during the game, even the cameras kept going to him and he was pouring with blood. Like, how has the ref not noticed this? Yeah. Um, Especially when you've got all the refs on the side as well. Yeah, Sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Yeah, like, have they done the um, concussion protocol? Have they, have they took this seriously? Because um, if you look at the, the other guys, 
that's his school and it's a lot worse for him. But mm. yeah, and then taking him off that half time, who knows in that time period of when he got injured and when he got the car, he could have made the whole situation worse. Um, like, yeah. I I think that makes it worse, so fun, doesn't it? You know what I mean? And I think it looks worse medically that they brought him off. You know what I mean? Because for me, if he's gone back on the pitch, he's fit to play. Or they they say he's fit to play. Um, yeah. I don't think he was. I think I think with any kind of with any any kind of head injury, there's got to be some kind of risk, and they don't know the lasting damage until um, until it's all being checked out. You know that, that there's there's certain tests for concussion that you've got to do. That that yeah. it wasn't done. As quick as it was done far too quickly. I know Raul Jimenez was down on the floor for, for quite a long time before the game started, I think seven or eight minutes, but is seven or eight minutes long enough to do a, a full um, examination on, on somebody for concussion and to see how they're reacting to get them back on. And then yeah. the next 30 seconds later, you've got a centre half, by the way, who is a big centre half who heads the ball. You know what I mean? So yeah. is that um, is that right? Is that is that right that he. Um, that he should be put in that position because you don't know what's going on with the brain, any kind of uh, bleed, any kind of uh, the next transition. It, it, it could be so serious, it's, it's absolutely scary. And I just, especially with dementia as well, and the conversations that, that, that ex-players' families are now having uh, after people who get dementia, you know what I mean? That, that who knows? People are saying don't head the ball. Heading the ball and then getting knocked out because you've had a, 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 a concussion or you've had a... a, a a bit of contact to the head or to the brain. It's you've got to be so careful, and you know what I mean. For me, I think uh, there's got to be it's got to be looked at again. You know what I mean. Yeah. We don't want people getting seriously injured or worse before we before we deal with it. You know what I mean. For me, the dementia conversation is only happening when people die. You know what I mean. Have we got have we got to have a serious injury before we have this conversation again? For me, I hope not. Um, you know what I mean? Because the, the, probably the last serious one you probably look at is Pe- Petr Cech um, when he got well. Um, I've been needing the side of the head by accident by Stephen Hunt, and it was, you know, what I mean, such a. You say big that, thing. mate. Tottenham have got form for this. Uh, in 2019, uh, Vertonghen uh, had a clash of heads, and he went off, and then he came back on, and then vomited on the side of the pitch not long after his head injury, and stayed on the pitch. By the way, um, I think they might have taken him off at some point, but like he stayed on the pitch for a considerable amount of time and vomited afterwards. So. That, to me, sets off alarm bells about what the Spurs medical team... Look, I don't want to single them out necessarily, but they've done it twice now. Um, sorry, they haven't, it wasn't Spurs at all because David Luiz doesn't play for Spurs. So just ignore that. But Spurs, oh. Premier League have got form for it, should I say. Um, but so you, in spoke, terms you, spoke of, there, you spoke there about uh, whose responsibility is it? For me, the, manager, the, doctors. the manager and the coaches have nothing to do with it. If a doctor they says shouldn't do, should they? Co- if, the, if, the, if the doctor says or the physio says he's coming off, he's coming off, and he's coming off for his health reasons. He's not coming off for football reasons, for tactical reasons. He's coming off because he's not fit to play, and he's not. And then after that, after he's gone off with concussion, you're not allowed to play for I think it's 14 days anyway. You know what I mean? So he's he's got to protect himself and be right. You know, I, I got knocked out in a game. Oh, buddy. Probably my dad will probably in the in the group chat will probably be, correct me if I'm wrong, but I got knocked out in a game in 90, 95, 96. Uh, we played against England at Lillishaw for um, for Middlesbrough. Went up for a header, turned round, somebody clapped me in the side of the head, and I woke up in hospital. And it was just it's one of the things you know. What I mean, it's things that you don't get yourself ready for. But I wasn't allowed to kick a ball or train or do anything for two weeks. And you know what I mean, but you, you have headaches. You, you know what I mean. You, you think you're all right, but you don't know what's going on inside. So you, there's there's yeah. certain things which, and I appreciate what the club did. You know what I mean. The club were amazing, but it just wasn't a nice uh, a nice feeling to miss football. But the, you're missing it for the for the, for health more than anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, You've got to ask: is it uh, is it the players' interest, their health and safety, or is the club just putting them on because it's a big game? Yeah, yeah. you've got to look after yourself. Yeah, totally, totally, totally agree. Absolutely bang on. And it's such a shame though, Fran, isn't it? You know what I mean? That players want to play and you, you know what I mean? And, and Davy Luiz is probably in a position where if he doesn't play and somebody else takes his place, he probably won't get back in. So he's yeah. subconsciously, he's thinking, I have to play. I've got to come back on because the sub's going to come on. It's dead early in the game. Um, we've got a chance to win. I've got a chance to impress. And you know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't work out like that. And you look at the way that the game went in the first half that... I'm not saying his head injury had an effect on the way he played, but he was he was all over the place. He was all over the place. He got ran behind. He he was sluggish. He was, you know what I mean. He had an, it had an impact on the on the first half result. You know what I mean. So, but then, whose fault is it? Surely that's the medical staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kelly said the sound of it was sickening. It was horrific. Yeah, yeah, it was um, 
Um, and very quickly, I don't very often talk about non-football stuff, but speaking of horrific and scary, did anyone see that crash in the Formula One yesterday? Yeah. That was one of the most horrific things I've ever seen in my life. It wasn't Jesus. the crash for me. It wasn't the crash. It was how, how he got out underneath the back. How end. long he was in the fire for, mate. I know. Yeah. He's just like sat there. This is frightening, mate. But mm. a few years ago, no way he would have made it out with that. No. Um, but yeah. Um, so a couple of things. Um, is the concussion protocol worth the paper it's written on? Because, like, what's the point in it? I think it needs looking at. I think it needs looking at for the for the safety of players, for the for the health of the players. You know what I mean, men and women. I think it's all got to be. Um, for me, look at it before it's too late. Look at it before something serious happens, because mm. you know what I mean. It's about it's about revisiting things each year. Because um, revisit that area. Is it working? Yes. Do we need to revisit it? Do we need to add something in? You know what I mean. Add a time scale in. Add. You know what I mean? Is there, is there an avenue for... Concussion for players, subs, maybe? Yeah, Rolling players, subs? Yeah, for players to have that five minute... Is there a time, time limit? Because if Raul Jimenez wasn't down for that long and they took him off straight away, not in the seven, eight, nine minutes which he was down for, he potentially, David Luiz, potentially would have been on quicker. He would have had to head a ball earlier and you could have been in a right, right, a right mess. You know what I mean? So we've there's got to be something and it's got to be a time scale for me. So the minute he gets injured... When is he allowed? If he's allowed, when is he allowed back on? You know what I mean? Just to make mm. sure he is okay. I don't yeah, hundred percent. I don't know the answer to it. I don't know the, yeah, to it. I, the other aspect is, you know, the way David Luiz plays, he's very kind of committed physically, and he like he, he's. Some would say he's rash sometimes. He's, 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 a, he's a ta- yeah. in his tackling, his headers. Like if he's feeling a bit groggy, and he goes up for a header two minutes later, misjudges it because he's feeling groggy. Clatters into someone, gets a knee in the head, or a you know another clash ahead. So you, you, like the damage that could have been done, or the seriousness seriousness of the injury, you know, could be life threatening. Like, and I just think I wish people, um, not just football, but other other sports people generally, would take concussions more seriously. Like, because um, serious business with long term mm. effects and. I totally um, agree. You know, totally uh, the, it pretty sure I'd like paraphrasing, but like, isn't the basic um, kind of thing of a concussion that the brain rattles around the head? Yeah, that's what it is. It's basically yeah. what it is, isn't it? I yeah, mean, that's what it is. That's, but, that's not good for anyone. No, I totally agree. But Fran, also from a current player, you know what I mean? You see an injury like that on um, live on TV on a Monday. You know what I mean? Does that does that have any, any kind of an impact on the way that you play? You know what I mean? Does... Because you know, obviously, I'm I'm well gone past past yeah. playing, but you know, what I mean, I I was never an advocate for heading the ball. I used to hate it. I'll be honest, because being a centre forward, you know, what I mean, you're always thinking someone's going to come over the back of you, so they're going to hurt yeah. you, and it was always a, a different area. But playing where you play, you know, what I mean, you're always seeing the flight of the ball, so you're always coming yeah. to head the ball, and you know, what I mean, I, I know obviously you're not the you're not the tallest of players, but you still would 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 jump and try and and, and yeah. try and win the ball anyway. But would 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 a kind of injury like that have any kind of impact? with you going into your next game with, with, with the way yeah. that you think? Well, watching that game actually brought back memories because I've had concussion twice now. I had one uh, quite bad one and I was out for football for about one and a half, two years. I was at college at the time and uh, with Blues, we went on a tour to Sweden. Uh, went up for a head out and the player just took me out after. Knocked out. Um, but yeah, the lasting effects after that because the protocol was so delayed when I was abroad from the doctors over there. Then when coming back over to England, it was a bit shuffly with the hospital. Mm. Uh, like they didn't really know what to do. Uh, so it got delayed, delayed, delayed. More recovery got delayed. In the end, it just got worse and worse. Like my memory was really, really bad. Uh, dizziness, I couldn't walk straight. But my college work, I had to delay the whole thing. I had to delay university because nothing was just processed in the head. Uh, the way concussion is, is really serious if it hits you in the right spot. Yeah. Uh, some cases are really mild and some are severe, but definitely watching that game, um, I didn't agree with how how the players come back on and the medical team yeah. left him go back on. So obviously you're focusing on your obviously your the time that happened to you. How um, how worrying the time was it? You know what I mean? Because obviously you speak about it there, how like you speak quite passionately there about uh, about how how disappointed you were at seeing players come back on. Can you remember anything about yours? What happened to you? Um, roughly, luckily, I've got the uh, a video of it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, just jumped off for a header, won the header. Um, she just followed into me in this kind of area. 
took me out basically um couldn't remember anything at the time um, as time goes on and watching the memory you kind of put pieces together a bit Oh, the pain I wouldn't want on anybody else. It was the pain I've suffered from the one and a half years after. It was like getting like a knife and just sawing it across every single nerve in your body. Like you'll be in tears. You can't move because you're just mm. in agony. Yeah, well, that's the thing, isn't it? Any kind, any kind of any kind of trauma to the brain, it affects different parts of your body. Yeah. You know what I mean? It are different sides, and it's yeah. you know what I mean. It's like different, different, different. Can't, and I'm on about a headache, you know what I mean? People think a headache, you think you've, you've got, you know what I mean? It can be behind your ear, it can be at the yeah. back, it can be at the top, of the, you know what I mean? And it it just depends which part of the brain's obviously hurt and, you know what I mean, yeah. and damage and things. But the damage doesn't always show size straight away, and that's obviously my issue with, with what happened yeah, yesterday. Yeah, 100%. And Franz just spoke there about um, couldn't walk straight, you know what I mean? That at college work, she probably f- f- like was. Memory f- loss f- is a common loss, thing forget, as well. Forgetting that? things, you know what I mean? But that comes later on, you know what I mean? So if. You know, I, I truly hope, and I hope David Louise makes a, a speedy full recovery. I hope he's not training this week. I hope he's not involved at the weekend. I hope he has two week, two weeks off. And the, and the and the reason that he's come off is to save him because because of his health and he was really struggling. Or he had a headache. Or he didn't feel very well because it could have been absolutely catastrophic. And you know what I mean? I'm so I'm so pleased that it didn't end in absolute disaster because the football club would have had some uh, some answers to to answer. Yeah. It would have been absolutely disastrous. At the end of the day, with neck injuries, uh, football clubs have taken absolutely, rightly so, no risks whatsoever. They will move the player, they won't. They put him in a neck brace straight away. And I want to see head injuries treated with the same severity and, and seriousness. Um, Leslie posted uh, a comment a bit earlier on. He said that it goes back to his argument about uh, bikes should be, uh, it should be a law that you've got to wear hail helmets. It's not rocket science especially when you're talking about um kids um and then he says again uh just now he says you need to ask accident emergency about uh how many go in falling off bikes and then cracking their heads he says i know it's not football but it's the same result at the end of the day like head injury head injuries are so serious and sometimes it doesn't have to be like a massive collision that can be the most serious you could have a seat like a huge collision of heads and nothing really come of it, or you could have a small um, collision of heads, and it could both you know both players could end up with like fractured or orbital bones and yeah. fractured it's skulls. Just a, it's and just all the wrong, the wrong, the wrong hit in the wrong place. So, you yeah, know, I think it's it's so it's so important. You know, what I mean, obviously, Fran uh, is obviously an advocate for for what happened to her. So mm. she's, she's very experienced in, in 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 that case. So obviously, speaking about then head injuries, and cause we we spoke on uh, was it f- two couple of Fridays show. Um, a go side that we spoke about uh, heading the ball. Um, I'd yeah. love a, a current player uh, to obviously tell us about um, thoughts about heading the ball in front. That you know, mm. I mean, that, that, that ex players are saying that players shouldn't head the ball up to a certain age. Um, yeah, I, I shouldn't head it in training. You know what I mean? I, listen, I don't want anyone to get uh, to get ill when they're older, uh, young, old, whatever, and, and, have, and have this kind of uh, kind, a kind of illness, but. You train as you play, don't you? You know what I mean. And yeah. and, and and being a centre half, not being able to head it. You know what I mean. We talked, we spoke, we used Harry Maguire as an example. You know, I watched him yesterday. Yeah. He was a warrior again in the second half. He won every header. You know what I mean. If he doesn't head the ball in training and can't practice it and replicate it, his timing's going to be off. His direction's going to be off, and and it yeah, doesn't yeah. really work. So you know what I mean. It's sometimes it's about doing that fine balance, not overdoing it, but still being able to do it. What's your take on? Heading the ball, which obviously has, is a is a follow on from yeah, yeah. what happened I think it's on, last night. Now. In the adults game, um, it is what it is. I mean, you try and you play. All that you can do is just adapt the way the actual football is actually manufactured um, to try and make the risk a bit less. Um, I've seen that there's been roars of the trying to implement in not heading in the kid game, mm. um, which I agree with. To be honest, um, kids are still develop, developing. Uh, still young, so it's not right for them to carry risks of dementia going forward um, just from playing football when you're young. What, you, what age you do you think, though, that they should be able to start bringing in head in for kids? Because I, I'd, I I'd still do it, Si. I, I would still do it, but I'd just use a soft ball because I think it's about technique more than anything. I'd use sponge balls. I'd use. Yeah. Um, I just, I just change the whole dynamics of it and, and just think. So what in training box. use like yeah. sponge yeah, balls and then yeah, at both, least they've got the technique to do it properly in the games. Because, yeah, it's about technique because I, I used to being a centre forward myself. I'd flick the ball on. I'd hit it on the top of my head. It would really hurt. 
You know what I mean? Mm. Whereas if I headed it properly on my forehead, it wouldn't hurt. But I'd always, you'd always have that feeling because if you head it in the wrong place, it really hurts. It knocks you for six a little bit. Um, and I totally get it. But sometimes if you, if you don't practice it and you don't get the right technique, it's like kicking the ball properly. You know what I mean? You need the right technique because when it does happen in a game or you eventually do it, yeah. I don't know. It's about that fine balance. You know what I mean? We spoke side yeah. about um, uh, that, uh, that players don't do it at a young age. And then they do it at 16 years old, for example. And then at 16, you spend three hours in one session heading, 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 heading in one night. You know what I mean? It's going to yeah. create more, How is more that? problems as well. Is that any better? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's probably worse. It's probably no. worse. Um, yeah, it's, it's a tricky one, I think. Um, but I, th- I, I like your idea of, of still training them how to head the ball, but with a, you know, like a sponge ball or something as kids. Because... Ultimately, you want to try and teach kids to play football on the floor anyway um, when it comes to teaching them how to play football. Um, the only so way you could th- do that, the only way you could do that is, is you play uh, no head height. So anything over shoulder height is, is a free kick. So the referee stops it anyway. So it stops that heading the ball. It stops the competitive trying to head it. You know what I mean? So for me, five years old, probably to yeah. seven, eight, nine years old, everything's under, under head height. So we're trying to, trying to get the best technical players we can get playing football, 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 pure football. But still introducing um, heading, but with soft balls because when it does happen, you can't just you can't head a leather ball without um, learning of the technique because it's mm. it does hurt. It hurts. I don't care what people say. It really hurts. And on the old players as well, they had the added extra, didn't they? Heading those leather balls, which just you know, yeah, I mean, especially when they got wet and stuff. Yeah. yeah, I'm old. I'm old, but not that old. You know what I mean, I'm glad I didn't have any of that. <sighs> Um, okay, we've got a couple of questions for, from Fra, for Fran, uh, from some people. Uh, so Stuart Campbell and his dad says, uh, Fran, what is your ambition for your playing career? Um, well, I have certain age groups of where I've got to meet. Um, certain okay. ambitions I've got, I've got to meet by certain ages. Um, I guess Interesting, I like that. Of, um, is the right, Right, so I, I, I'll, end, I'll end put a question before my dad's question because obviously his is quite a yeah. long-winded one for the future. So have you hit all the targets that you set yourself previously? Um, no. Right, okay. No. Uh, due to the concussion, of course, I was out for years. So physically my development was behind. Um, that's why now I felt like the right time after a couple of years of West Brom and it really needs to be gone and catch up on the thing. So are you being are you being a bit hard on yourself then setting those kind of targets by a certain age and without like say maybe re reevaluating um, time scales uh, because yeah, yeah. you know what I mean it's like it's obviously not a, not an ability thing you know what I mean I've, I've obviously people speak very highly of you um, you know what I mean you've obviously got to move to a very good club at a very good level you know what I mean and the only way you know what I mean your progression is 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 up again which is which is absolutely fantastic um, but yeah like yeah like are you putting too much pressure on yourself? Or are the targets that you set achievable? Yeah, the targets I've got are achievable, yeah. Like, I'm in the championship uh, team now. I really want to kick on, uh, get myself in the starting eleven, get the team up from the bottom three. Uh, so that's really my personal focus for this year or two, uh, focusing at Coventry. Um, then in years to come, obviously progressing to the top league and get myself cemented into that league as well. Um, yeah, I am hard on myself, but... Uh, that's how I've got results. <laughs> yeah, yeah I think. Balance. But I think, I think that's important. That's, good, that's, don't they? That, yeah, of course they are. Yeah, you know what I mean. I just think sometimes it's it's about evaluating, isn't it? You know what I mean. I I, I, give, I give myself a target every season. You know what I mean. Or every couple of seasons at the start of a signing for a club, for example. You know what I mean. It's good to set a target. You know what I mean. That's promotion or it's um, individually or you know, it's some kind of yeah. targets. I think you've got to push yourself because if you didn't set targets, you'd never really know if you if you've achieved anything or not achieved yeah. anything. You know, because yeah. you can't. I think probably you don't realise, and I'm not saying this is going to happen to you very quickly, by the way, but I think sometimes you only look back at your career and, 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 and think if you're being successful, if that makes sense, you know what I mean? Like when you're there and you're in that bubble, um, you know what I mean? Because every game comes thick and fast. You, you've mm-hmm. played well or you've played badly. You think you've played well, but the manager doesn't. Or your manager thinks that you can do more, but you, you know you've played well yourself. It's just a, a catch-22 situation because, you know what I mean, I didn't need anybody. You know what I mean? My dad will say in the group chat, you know what I mean? He, he said I was rubbish every week, but I knew myself if I played well, I played bad. I didn't need anybody to tell me. I didn't need manager to tell me, supporters to tell me, the radio to tell me, the papers, papers to tell me. Everybody, mm-hmm. There's no people there to tell you to play badly. So it's uh, sometimes it's important just yeah. to, just to keep your feet on the ground and, and just keep going because you know what I mean. 
I was obviously quite lucky when I played that social media wasn't um, uh, wasn't 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 available. You know what I mean? Because if you start, they have um, the they have in, internet back then and uh, black and white TV. So I always look yeah, good in black and white. See. I think I think I look good. I had a, I had a decent yeah. tan in black and white. Yeah, well, so, no, I'm being, I'm being, I don't know why I'm being so cruel. We're about the same, same age. Same age. I don't know. I You're a little, a little bit older than me, but I look a bit older than you. It's, um, <laughs> it's just one of them, isn't it? Um, Franz, Franz just nearly fell off his seat there when you said you're younger than me. There, she was like, Jesus, really? Yeah, he has got the body of a seventy-five-year-old. That's why <laughs> I have, by the way. Um, Reese David Evans says, um, do you get to use the club facilities training? <clears throat> physio etc or do the ladies have their own training centre and facilities uh, so at Coventry now um, we're trying at the same ground as um, at the Coventry men so yeah it's all pretty similar obviously we have our own coaching staff um, we have a lot of staff taking care medically as well as normal coaching staff um, yeah but I've not been there too long to see um, yeah. uh, if, if it's both implemented into each other the men's and the women's Fan, you might not know the answer to this, but why? So why United and not City? If the links, the link, then why United and not City? I can't answer that. I'm yeah, sure. I'm just. Not yeah, we, we sure. spoke. It's an interesting uh, we spoke, one. Yeah, we spoke. Yeah. Um, we had Rebecca Basson, who plays for Middlesbrough. She's played for Leeds United. She's played for Sunderland. Rebecca, um, and she said how important it is to have the link with the first team men's football and the link with the ladies teams because it's the only way to push the ladies game forward and to have. Um, and to have the link, training at the same places obviously helps. You know what I mean? Having that, having that opportunity to play. Obviously, I know at the minute, Coventry City's men haven't got their own ground at the minute for, uh, for whatever reason, and they're playing at St Andrews. Um, so, but it's <clears throat> so important that we, that the clubs have that link. You know what I mean? Man United do, Man City do. You know what I mean? The, the Tottenham Hospers do, Arsenal do, Chelsea do. It's so important for me that every club follows suit. And if you don't, then for me, tell the, tell, tell the men's teams that they have to have the link. You know what I mean? They have the link with you yeah. team, with the boys. So why not the links with the girls and the women? It's, for me, it's key, I completely key agree with that. 100%. I just had a very quick look on Wikipedia to see if I typed in, like, why United and not City. Um, so they were Coventry City, but uh, in 2015, they were taken over by uh, someone. Or, and they were rebranded as the they rebranded lady side as Coventry United Ladies FC. I Interesting. doesn't say why, but they were Coventry City previously. Um, but I completely agree with you, Andy. By the way, I think that just like academy systems, the women's team should all be linked with the clubs. Mm. Um, I find it quite frustrating that a club like even like a club like Man United, I think it's only in the last eighteen months. The, the, the had, women's, the, the, yeah, where the they've been had, promoting uh, the women's team on yeah. the Man United website and things like that. Before That's that, it was completely uh, separate. It was it was a manager Man United fan. It's is it is it is it? That's no, not Karen Carney, is it? That's not man. Is she the manager um, Man United? Casey Stoney. Casey Stoney, yeah. So yeah, so and and this is important, isn't it? You know, in United now, I watched against Man City last was it last week in the in the League Cup, and then I watched them the week before when they drew in the league when they were two 0 up, and it was they're playing at really good grounds. You know what I mean? They they would get. Very good attendances, obviously, uh, post and pre-COVID. Um, but like Sai says there, why only now? You know what I mean? Why, why, why push it now? It's you know what I mean. I, like I, I follow um, the social media guy on uh, on uh, LinkedIn, and Man United ladies the other day got one million followers, which is just it's unbelievable. But yeah. it shows how important it is. It's it's yeah, it's not yeah. it's not this, and that's overnight. You know what I mean? Because they've only been going a couple of seasons, a couple of years. So mm-hmm. you know what I mean? They're trying obviously very quickly to catch up of, of the. The the man uh, the Man Cities and the Arsenal's and the Chelsea's you know what I mean I I can go back my memory to, for women's football is Doncaster Bells how 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 strong Doncaster mm. used to be Doncaster yeah, used to be the team yeah. to be they used to be okay. used to be the best team nobody could touch them they had the best players mm-hmm. everyone played for England and then obviously Sunderland then came into the the Northern era um, obviously Steph Houghton and all those kind of players came through which all moved on to Man City and then you look at everything's took off and it's the women's games took off professionally you know what I mean the leagues have got stronger. Which I think is important, Fran, isn't it? You know what I mean? Isn't it, isn't it important to have so many competitive leagues where instead of just having one strong league and everyone trying to get into that league, it's strong to have filtered leagues down, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Look, um, when I was in the league with West Bromwich Albion, obviously there's only one team in that league that can get promoted. And you've got about five teams this season fighting for that top spot. Um, all close games. That league's about consistency. Who's going to get the three points every game? But yeah, it's tough. Especially how one team can just get promoted. What's and the standard that, like in Europe in women's football? Like, 
you know, like Italy and Spain and, and is it similar to the men's game in that you've kind of got like your Madrids and your Barcelonas who are quite strong or is there different teams in different areas maybe which are stronger to the men's game? Yeah, only the past say, two, three seasons um, teams around Europe have like, started to progress the women's team. Uh, so the Juventus, the Barcelona, you around Madrid. Um, yeah, but I think the men, the men have got like, the backing into the women now. Yeah. So they've got a lot of money, they've bought mm. um, really top players from around the world, uh, trying to build the team really good, yeah. Um, one of the teammates from Coventry, Chelsea Western, she's just gone to Italy. Um, so they're, they're progressing as well. I think uh, as time goes on, you'll get these smaller countries uh, progressing in the women's, in the women's game. Is that, is, that a dream that, is that a dream fun? Is that a dream? You spoke about Italy there. Is that a dream going abroad to play? Um, it's something I'll tick off my list, yeah. Definitely. Good. Good. I like that. Uh, no, I, I have noticed that. more British female players going abroad in the last mm. probably 18 months, maybe two years, than I'd ever seen before. Because generally, like all the British players seem to play in the English league system. But I've just noticed a little bit to some more and more players going abroad, which ultimately, you know, that's good for the female game. That other, also come back to other that parts of Europe are strengthening. Yeah, they, of course. Come but... back, which, which, which is, I think, is concerning, though. You know what I mean? Because like, you look at the, you look at the standard in the players which got signed during the during the transfer window. You know what I mean? Obviously, Lucy Bronze came back to England. A couple of other players from Man City came back. Mm. Obviously, the superstar signed at Tottenham from from America. You know what I mean? So. You, it can't compete sometimes with that kind of money if people are f- flying money like that around. You know what I mean? How can other teams yeah. compete? You know that um, obviously France league. You know what I mean? I know, I follow one of the teams in France league uh, quite closely because um, I know a couple of the Durham City girls, and um, yeah. you know what I mean they've been strong for years. You know what I mean? They just haven't had that. Um, last season might have been their year, but obviously COVID obviously got 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 stamped mm-hmm. in the way. You know what I mean? This season they're doing all right. The top of the league, they haven't been beaten this season in the league, and they're still in the league cup, so they're, they're doing all right there. I watched. Um, Liverpool against Everton, uh, ladies in the League Cup. When I think Everton beat, beat Liverpool one 0 but Liverpool absolutely battered them. You know they've got some very good attacking players, loads yeah. of pace, and it's there was no difference from what I watched um, to some to, to the level in, in the WSL. You know what I mean? And that gives credit. We we speak all the time, mm-hmm. say about the Championship and the Premier League, and this player, that player can play at the top level and play in the high level. I see that the same as. Is, is 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 the league that France playing in WSL two? You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's a platform for people to play. It's a platform and it gives people. You know what I mean? Fran would probably rather play for Coventry City and play week in week out and and, and enhance her development than going sitting on Reading or West Ham's bench. Because yeah. have you? You know what I mean? I I I'm a big advocate of people going out and playing and wanting to play. You know what yeah. I mean? Because yeah. that opportunity will come. If that's with the club that you're at now or another club in this league which you progress on or you sign at various levels and, and later on in your career, which is absolutely the dream and the fantastic one. But it's about playing. You know what I mean? How can people play well, develop, score goals, keep clean sheets? If they're sat on the backside on the bench, it just baffles me. I just yeah. don't understand yeah. it. don't understand yeah. it at all. But some of the teams in that league, obviously we had um, Emil Heskey on the show, on our show, mm-hmm. not, so, not so long ago. Emil is now, I think he's general manager for the women's team at Leicester. Um, and obviously they've started really strong. They're second in the league, uh, so it's you know when you've got people like that back in your women's team, you're always yeah. going to have a strong outfit, and you're always going to have the best things pushed at you women. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Fran said, their side about Coventry United and Coventry men's first team training at the same facility. That's important for me because it's important for the girls to have the facilities what the boys and the men yeah. have. Because if you're going to make it professional, you've got to have professional. Yeah. Fac- it's got to be professional off the pitch as well as on the pitch, isn't it? And it seems like, um, look, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but the little that I do see and I know, it seems like the second tier now is becoming the facilities and everything off the pitch is really going up a level. It's it's, And that's ultimately going to make everything stronger. Um, I'm going to ask you a question in a minute, Fran, actually about the, the money kind of situation and the gap it creates from maybe the, the richest teams to the teams who are not paying as much. But I just wanted to uh, ask you this question from Cade. Uh, Cade Child says, um, uh, who's your hero in football, uh, either female or male? Uh, Karen Carney, yeah. Um, when I was at Blues, uh, Karen was uh, my coach. She was my skills coach. Um, so I was, up, I was close with a lot of the first-team Blues 
Fire, sorry, Bill Potter, uh, Jared Moore, uh, Taz Carney. Um, she's just a down to earth person, wants to improve. Um, yeah, so I get along with Taz quite well. Cool. Um, is it sorry, Sai? Si, is it is it important? Ahead. Is it important that um, that you've obviously got the respect for it? Is that that she helps younger players as well and helps players wanting to become better as well because she's had that experience. She's had that experience at club yeah. level. She's done it at national level. She's been to major tournaments. She's played in the big games. So is her knowledge and experience important to filter down to you and other younger players? You know, what I mean, I'm on about players who are probably wanting to start up, and you know, what I mean, because she's. She's been there and wore the T-shirt, right? That she's had every experience going in, in yeah, the women's game yeah. and in football. Yeah, so when you've got the opportunity to be coached by players that have been there, done that, experienced everything, and I like the level that you want to achieve, you've got to take everything um, on board. Like, I still have my review forms back when I was under 10, from Kaz, from Joe Potter. I've still got everything there for my development. You've really got to take everything uh, in both hands if you want to be successful. And I think it's important, side for me. You know what I mean? Because you've got to take that on on the chin. You know what I mean? Because it's not all it's not all roses being a footballer. You know what I mean? There's 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 yeah. load of rubbish what goes with it, and there's you know what I mean? We've spoke, haven't we? You know what I mean? It's the best thing in the world one minute, uh, and then the game finishes, and it's the worst game in the world. Oh, and yeah. just, you know what I mean? It's just being a football fan, being a football player, the highs and the lows. People talk about roller coasters and 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 mental health and mental well being. You know what I mean? It's just it's it, and, and COVID as well adding add to it. Such yeah. a it's the best thing. It's the best game in the world. I mean, that's why we all watch it. We all love it. But it's so frustrating and horrible at the same time. And you, you know, what I mean, one minute you could be on the highest of the high, and then midweek you could be on the lowest of the low because it could be an injury, it could be uh, a transfer, it could be it could be anything. A bad game, an own goal. It could be just. It's just. You know what I mean? It's just why we love why we love being involved in the game. I guess. Yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent, mate. Um. So yeah, the question I was going to ask is, um, look, clearly. Uh, at the moment, there's not as much money in the women's game as there is in the men's game. There's not much. There's not that you know any sport around the world. I don't think has got as much money as there is in men's football at the moment. It's ridiculous. But in the women's game, do you have sort of a few teams which maybe have got you know a lot of money, which they can then pay big wages to to the players they sign. And then if that is the case, does that then create a bit of a vacuum in terms of you'll have one or two teams in the Super League who are perhaps, you know, pushing for the title, but then it's kind of like those and then the rest? Or is generally the standard all, you know, is it quite close in terms of the competition, I suppose I'm asking? Yeah, um, so you get your big teams, your Man City, your Arsenal's, um the big teams that I've got a good connection with the men's team now that are uh, buying players from America and abroad, like Tottenham have got Alex Morgan, uh, Man United, how they've developed. I'm not having a team and then it's been like two seasons we've gone from championship to like, it's top of the table for uh, WSL1. It does make a big impact. Um, but if you watch, from my experience when I was at Blues, um, we didn't have a lot of money at all. The club didn't have a lot of money. Um, they were still competing for Champions League. Uh, you watch the league now, the six, the mid-table, um, all the teams around them, I've got loads more money on them. So I guess it's good having a lot of individually good players which are paying big wages for, but are these players actually going to gel together and play well together? Is what really matters. Yeah, 100%. Um, and you're muted, mate. Sorry. Um, I think the transfer fees, what I saw on the deadline day, were just unbelievable and probably something that which... I never probably saw coming. I didn't. Uh, I didn't expect it. I didn't see some of the superstars coming back to England. Um, I thought they were quite content and happy playing for Paris Saint Germain, playing for um, other teams in France or in Germany. Uh, but I think that shows how strong Man City want the league, how uh, progressive they want to be, because they obviously haven't probably won as much um, recently. You know what I mean? With Chelsea um, and Arsenal obviously taking back over. Um, but obviously got themselves a new manager in uh, in Taylor. Um, I, I just think it's 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 amazing, and I think it must be so exciting for uh, a young player and a young person to uh, to see that happening, though, Fran. You know what I mean? Because the dream is to get there, right, and play there and play play against them in the FA Cup and the League Cup, and um, and and just showcase your talents. You know, it's just yeah, well. First and foremost, to get the crowds back because playing in front of a crowd is just amazing. You know what I mean? You get that buzz. You know what I mean? They're like the twelfth, thirteenth man. It's just, it's amazing. But then on top of that, to to celebrate a victory against a, a good side with supporters mm -hmm. is just 
the best possible thing. Um, sorry to just jump in there. I just want because you mentioned crowds, and uh, Reese has asked a really interesting question, um, which kind of relates to that. He says um, he's been watching a few women's games, um, and he's noticed that it's not as tribal as the as the men's game can be in terms of the fans. Uh, and he says where like the uh, the atmospheres are as hostile. He says, would you like to see? Uh, Something like that in the ladies' game, where the fans become a bit more uh, tribal and a bit more hostile. Uh, you do get it in the women's game. Uh, you Is probably it? don't see it. It's probably because you've not gotten as much support as. But even when I was younger, you still get them people on the side having a go at you. Um, mm. Even racist m- remarks. No. Yeah, way. you do, you do get it in the women's game. I guess what the women's game now is more family orientated. Um, yeah. So Where's the most different. hostile place to play? Solly or Moss. Solly or Moss has a really good family feel all around it. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so Gaz asked this question every every week. <laughs> yeah, does. Um, so far, no one has kind of ducked out of it. We've been pleasantly surprised. But I will. <laughs> I will slightly reword it because I do try not to swear to encourage people of all ages to join us on a Monday night. Um, he says, who is the uh, the biggest uh, knobhead uh, that, you, that you've met in football so far and why? Uh, Such a strange question. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a question that some people, some people haven't got the answer to, or some people just slips off the tongue. Yeah, I guess if you if you quite like if you're an ex player in some ways, I think it's easier, isn't it? Because you've got a lot more years to go back on and yeah. remember all those people who went. Also, not also very nice. as well, though that 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 kind of that kind of question uh, can only be alluded to if someone's upset you. You know what I mean? Or you yeah. come across somebody who's, um, yeah, who's done something to you or being or, or being a you know? Yeah, basically, yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas. For me, I'll say the person that gave me concussion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good answer. Fair I like that. <laughs> yeah. um, Donna asks, uh, she says, Hi, Fran, did you uh, used to go and watch professional football when you were a child? And is there is that where your love for the game began? And uh, I'll just add a little bit on that. Um, I know you mentioned you went to watch the, uh, was it Birmingham at the start, you said? Yeah. Um, did you, how old were you when you started watching? Uh, Birmingham, but obviously Donna there. She's asked about uh, if you used to go watch them when you were younger. As far as I can remember, probably around six. Really young, right from the beginning. Yeah, I used to go every weekend with my uh, nan and granddad. Got to the games, always watch them on TV. Yeah, that's how you kind of fall in love with the game. You get involved with it. Um, you know more about the sport, and that's kind of how I got into the football. It is important now, even today. I have to watch the game analyse um, aspects of the women's game, the men's game, to get myself better as well. So, yeah, it's we, important to watch them. I think were, you a shout, were you a shouty fan when you used to watch, like when you were a kid and stuff? Did no, you used to I shout? <laughs> just silently sit, like quietly sit there. Sit in mm-hmm. I think Don, I think Don is asking that, because obviously I, think, I, I follow Donna on uh, social media and uh, her, her girls, she's got two girls, I think, from her pictures. Yeah. They, they big City fans, Cardiff City fans. Yeah. yeah, and they got the games, and you know, right. I think, yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, she religiously got the games, even when they're, mm. they've been watching on TV, they get full kitted up, I think, and I think they've uh, got got some good links with some players who've uh, donated some shirts and things as well. So you know, what I mean, I, I think it's so important to get that next generation into in, uh, into football. You know what I mean? If they're going to be the next uh, Karen Carney, fantastic. You know what I mean? If they're going just mm-hmm. to just to put money back into the club as an adult when they get older, the club needs men, women. Boys, girls, it needs all the help they can get. You know, I mean, that was before COVID came around. You know, so it's so important yeah. that the clubs uh, are accessible for for all ages and all sexes. For me, it's just it's so, it's so important, so important. I'll let you and I'll let you put that question to uh, Fran, uh, Andy. Who should we put our money on to be go- top goal scorer in the league this season? Uh, which league? <laughs> uh, we'll go on your. Well, 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 yes, Dad. If you're going to ask a question. Come you know on. I mean? Then you need to be clear. Uh, you need, yeah, you need to be a little. And you didn't put a question mark on the end, so it's not really a question. It's more of a more of a statement. That annoys me. That you know I know. I mean? It's the teacher in that you. I think. We, I think yeah. we're going to have to bring in a rule where if you don't me. correctly use uh, question marks, you don't get a question. If you're right. not going to use punctuation, 
You're not having a question. Not, I'm, not, I'm going to dismiss it from now on. There we go. <laughs> just the teacher. There we go. Uh, um, let's, say, let's, let's say your league then, Fran, or your team. You know what I mean? So if you had, a, if you had uh, some money to put on who was going to finish top goal scorer and how many goals they would finish with this season, who will it be in uh, your team, in your short, obviously, spell so far at your club? Who's impressed you going forward? So far, I'd go with Amber Hughes. Um, what's what's yeah. her what's her attributes? What's what's going to make her score plenty of goals? Uh, so she plays on the wing. Uh, she's right, a very okay. direct player, nibbly, uh, dribbler. Yeah, she works hard. She's very good individually one v one as well. And um, so I feel she's a player that you can rely on. Uh, probably a dream. Right. Probably a dream for you if you're playing the midfield that you can get the ball and get it out to her. You know what I mean? You need all the options you get, yeah, don't yeah. you? You know that I, I love I love playing out on the wing. I just. It, for me, it was it was a safe haven that your fullback, uh, your, your fullback's not really going to hurt you because they were always smaller than the centre half. So you always had that, you know, we always had that chance to to have a little bit of fun and yeah. uh, enjoy the game a little bit more. Where playing centre forward, no, I wasn't, uh, didn't enjoy a lot of games. Uh, Reese has followed up his question about the crowd. Uh, he said, "So, do you prefer to play in front of a family orientated crowd, or would you enjoy playing in front of a hostile crowd?" Uh, obviously, where they aren't racist and sexist, etc. Um, when you're playing a game, really, you kind of block it out. Mm. It's only if you let the crowd get in your head is when you actually mm. hear everything. Or there's a stoppage in play, and there's a, stop, a big stoppage, and you look around yeah. and realise. Um, but most of the time, really, no matter how many people you got around you, your mind's just in the game. But mm. yeah, family orientated is is nice, of course. Um, kids are more approachable to go towards at the end of the game but yeah. any crowd really yeah, because my head's just in the game when I'm playing I think cool. sometimes Sai we spoke haven't we about uh, when we've had this question about uh, about hostile places to play and obviously Millwall comes up quite a lot um, you know what I mean I've played there a couple of times and it scared the life out of me I'll be honest I, I didn't come away I haven't come away with it with very fond memories but it's it's a game that always sticks with you and and for me, it never it doesn't get any worse. You know what I mean. So any anywhere where you go and, and people go, oh, that's not a very nice place to play. You just go, no, that's it's full of pussy cats. You know what I mean? Because it's mm. just it's nothing. You know that that people people obviously go on about Galatasaray. People only go on about Leeds. People go on about Cardiff. Minion Park. Um, obviously Millwall, and you know what I mean. That the fans get a reputation. Grounds get a reputation, and sometimes I don't always think it's fair. Um, that you know what I mean. There might be one incident in the game which. Supporters are passionate. Someone might get said in uh, in a moment in the game, and a player might react. Um, you know what I mean? As long as it's not a racist comment or a comment which is going to hurt somebody. You know what I mean? That the people people try. And, Franz just said there. Supporters say things to try and distract you from from your game. You know what I mean? And if you let it happen and you react and um, and it distracts you from your game and it can have an influence on the way you're playing. You know that I've been involved in games when. Um, uh, home games and away games, where you know, what I mean, you listen to the supporters if you're having a bad game, and and you and you get embroiled into it, you get brought into it. You know, what I mean that they shout something bad at you, and you have a little go back, and then by the time you know it, you sat on your backside because you've been brought off, and you think he's one, hasn't he? You know what I mean? So mm. it was the idiot. It was the idiot. I'm the idiot because I've listened to and I've 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 made the manager's job easy because I'm sat next to him now, and I probably won't be playing next week. Um, whereas if you blank it out and score, who do you go and celebrate in front of? The block was just being abusing you. You know what I mean? So there's a way to do it and there's a way not to do it. You know what I mean? I've done both and it's you get more joy out of doing it that way, but sometimes sometimes you can't help yourself by doing it the wrong way. You learn by your mistakes, but I probably didn't. I probably learned after my fifth or sixth mistake. Um, okay. Uh, Andy John says, Fran, you have illuminated the room. Keep going with the step overs. There you go. I like it. Got a fan. Um, I like it. Uh, John, John has asked a good question. I was John gonna. Just, that's question. exactly where I was just going to read them. And and I'm not blowing smoke up her backside here either, by the way. But she's put a question mm. mark on it. Well, there you go. She gets it answered then, doesn't she? Yeah, um, straight away. What do you think you would be if you weren't? Uh, what would you think you'd be doing now if you weren't a footballer? I hope that's not to me, by the way. I hope that's to Fran. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll probably be in um, housing development or. Owning my own food business, my, my family own food businesses, so um, okay, yeah, kind of down that kind of way. Um, um, okay, so Stuart Campbell sent in two questions, hasn't put a question mark on either. Don't, don't, nothing. Shocking. Yeah, don't, because Andon will, will get, he's done it on purpose now, if he's done that. Has he done that? He, I think he'd done it before we said, to be fair. So I will read him just because he told you them. Um, I don't want to get in trouble with your dad, anyway. 
uh, he, he says, is the USA the best place uh, to earn money? I think he means in terms of the female game. Uh, currently, I'd say yes. Yeah. But a lot of other teams, big name clubs now are matching it. I think the thing is with the US, your actual pay from the club is less. Um, mm. And you actually get paid more here. But in the US, you've got more sponsorships with, with top players. That's how they earn more. Is it an avenue yeah, think... front for uh, for young people to go and do go and do a degree and then flip up scholarships? Because obviously, I know men do it. Um, I know obviously one of my one of my partners, Jamie Clark, his son Isaac is in a uh, is in is doing a, a scholarship um, in America uh, and and obviously playing for regular football and doing his doing his qualifications at the same time. Is, is that is that something which is happening a lot in America for English English girls as well? Yeah, I've seen a lot of players go over to um, USA, get a scholarship, do the uni course and then come back. And to be honest, I've got mixed reviews. Uh, some players have come back even better. Some players have come back worse. I guess it just depends on the individual and how they take the opportunity. Mm. Uh, like an individual could stay here, do university here and still work just as hard. Yeah. But I guess doesn't have the luxury of the USA. I, the I guess that's the standard of football as well, right? That the, uh, what What... Probably what I get is, you know, what I mean, if you if you're better at football, you get you 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 must be be able to play at the highest level you can, surely. You know what I mean? Or is it just, does it go on your academic qualifications or how clever you are? Because, you know, what I mean, if I was playing football on how clever I was at school, I would probably be less than less than a pub footballer. You know that? <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I think it's, sometimes it's, it's getting that fine balance, isn't it? You know what I mean? That yes, you you want to play football and you're doing it for the football, but. The qualification goes hand in hand, and as long as you're doing the work and you're trying the best that you can, because not everyone can do academic qualifications. Yeah, of course. Um, you know what I mean. But sometimes you're just there for the football, aren't you? You know what I mean. Your football is your primary focus and your main focus, and and something that that you don't want to um, give away that opportunity. Yeah, I guess in the women's game now, because um, of the financial backing that we haven't got at the time as the men, you have to kind of have something to back up just in case, like you get concussion, you get bad injuries. Um, so a lot of the girls now are making sure that they got the university or they get a steady job, work the way up the ranks, um, just to get back up from the football. Um, Reese asked a question which kind of follows on for them from that a little bit. He says, um, "Is there a pathway for uh, uh, for a coaching career in the ladies' game or he, and the men's game as well?" And he said, "Once you retire, is there help to encourage you to get your coaching badges?" So obviously, Andy, in your case, I've been saying it like once you retire. But Fran, like, do they encourage the female players to do things like coaching badges as well? Uh, yes. Yeah, so when I was at Blues, I know that all the first team uh, women when I was a kid, they'd got to the, each of the age groups to encourage them to get the coaching badges as a backup career as well. Um, I know that a lot of the girls I play with as well get the coaching badges because um, they've they've got experience in the game, um, mm. they can coach it. So. Yeah, I think there is, there is development and it's a lot of who you know in the game uh, to get yourself coaching jobs in different clubs. Is that something that you that you look at though, Fran? Is is coaching something which which you've thought about? You know what I mean? Because you you've worked for good coaches, you've seen good coaching, you've seen bad coaching. You know what I mean? Is yeah, yeah. is coaching there something that you thought? Do you know what? I want to I want to get them badges in in the back pocket, so to speak, in case I want to use them one yeah, day in the future. Yeah, yeah I have thought about it. Um, I've just been so busy uh, working and doing football. Yeah, I just haven't done it so far. Uh, but yeah, mm. definitely well looking looking into it. It's a big commitment, though, sir. You know what I mean? Because coaching's uh, it's a quite selfish thing as well because it, 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 there's 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 so many of them. You know what I mean? That that trying to get yeah, Fran said about your connections and the people you know. You know what I mean? Sometimes you can get a job, but by people you know, and and it's that old terminology and, and saying that it's jobs for the boys sometimes that, you know what I mean, that we spoke about uh, John Sheridan having 15, 15 jobs in 11 years, mm. you know what I mean, this is just outstanding, you know what I mean, he's got the best agent in the world, but um, sometimes... He's not coaching's... happy about that at all, either. No, I'm not, no, I just don't get it, I just don't get it, but jo coaching's, coaching's just different, you know what I mean, I, I started off coaching kids, you know what I mean, I, I got my qualifications uh, predominantly by coaching, coaching kids, I moved to adults, still did the kids, um, Decided that kids wasn't for me anymore, so I I, I focused on the adults and I had I had loads of fun. Um, but then it got to a level where coaching was becoming less, managing was becoming man managing. Uh, a semi professional club was was becoming just more in, overpowering, um, and you lose your love for it a little bit. You know what I mean? And when you get mm. your fingers burnt, and uh, and when you're just so busy and you judge on results and 
And instead of enjoying a game after after a Saturday when you've won, lost, or drawn, you're getting somebody knocking on your door saying, "Why aren't I playing?" You know what I mean? And I'm thinking, "Geez, I can't even enjoy a win." You know what I mean? It's just <laughs> it's never ending. Didn't happen very often, by the way. But when it did, I didn't couldn't, couldn't really enjoy it. So it's 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 difficult, you know. It's not for everybody. And um, I'm glad they did it. It's something that I've that I've like like Fran did. You know what I mean? Fran says, you know what I mean? Tick the box. You know what I mean? I, I tried it. You know what I mean? I I've got no yeah. regrets. I'm not I'm not I'm not going to get back into it again. It's just. Uh, but no, for every for every young player, I'd, I'd certainly give it a go because, like I say, it's not for everybody, but it it, it can be good, and especially for uh, for women and for girls. Uh, there's so many girls out there who want to play, who want a platform, who want an opportunity from to be coached by a player. Um, you know what I mean? I I don't know if she watches this show. I hope she does because I'm going to uh, I'm going to give her give her a really big compliment. But uh, Bianca Rowins, you know what I mean? She used to play for Middlesbrough Ladies. She played for. Plays for Norton now, I think. Norton Stockton and Inchance and um, in, in, in Middlesbrough. Uh, my daughter absolutely idolises her. I'll idolise mm. her, you know what I mean? Because of the way that she, she gave her a trophy once when she was a young kid. So she wanted to go and watch her and she loved her. Absolutely loved her. Loved the way that she played. Very aggressive. And and, and that bond and friendship has been there ever since. And I know the family because of that reason. And, it, and, it, and it, it's just something that always stands stands with me, you know, that she went, she went above and beyond with her. So it's... You know what I mean, and, and now she's still playing because of I don't believe because of that. So it's it's so important that um, that that happens, and people have aspirations, and people that can follow following the footsteps. Spot on, mate. Spot on. Uh, Stuart Campbell says, uh, "What's the standard Keen, of referee? Right, yeah, he's living it. What's Keen, the right. yeah? What's the standard of the referees in the women's football? Oh. Um, Please tell me it's better than the AFL because the AFL is absolutely draining the life out of me." No, there is a lot to improve. Um, about really, um, I could go Are you one of those, Fran? You said at the start about that, that you were you were the most aggressive player. So does that does that does that go does that go towards referees as well? Uh, no, I've, I found out now that if I approach a ref a different way, it kind of makes them look stupid about their bad decisions. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so when you, you say referees, you found out, when you say you found out, did you find out the hard way then? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I figured it out because I was smart. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it out the hard way. I figured it out the hard way twice, <laughs> and uh, after the first time, I never listened. So yeah, we all yeah. we all we all get there. We all get there in the end, our, our own different ways. Yeah, yeah. But um, in terms of um, the refereeing in the leagues, obviously I, I've been at Cov for about a week, and their game, the last time that we had against Sheffield, um, Sheffield are a top club. Uh, Top three, four teams in the league. Obviously, cover like bottom three currently at the minute. Uh, so it was a big game. Um, but yeah, they lost one nil. A penalty decision. Stupid. Weren't a penalty at all. Not being biased. Uh, got the ball. Um, obviously, we got a penalty scored. So that's three points lost. And when you've got teams fighting for relegation, promotion, uh, these kind of decisions, what the officials make, make such a big difference in the game. A team could be relegated for this reason or a team could miss out on the promotion um, but I don't know if there's any um, FA do they get reviewed uh, the referees at the each game I don't know what their like tracking system is do they have to meet a certain percentage of um, successful decisions in a game um, yeah but it, it does need to be reviewed because there's a lot going on at the minute especially in VAR as well in the men's game um, yeah well, we said this, I didn't we? We spoke, we spoke, we spoke quite uh, at length and uh, passionately about the problem with English football is is the referees in the Premier League. If they don't perform, they get demoted or chucked into the yeah, they championship. Get in the championship or EFL. Uh, if you don't perform well there, what happens to you? You know what I mean? Do you do you get mm. dropped down to League League One, League Two? You know what I mean? I I, I see that as disrespectful. You know what I mean? Because you you, you then. Uh, you're saying those leagues don't matter as much. Don't matter, yeah. You know what I mean? The championship doesn't matter as, as much as the Premier League. For me, uh, 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 the bigger carrot is if you make mistakes and you make regular mistakes, then you just don't referee the following week. You know what I mean? Why should you get Why should you get a game in the championship, which could be a big game, by the way? Or you know what I mean? And, and that's for me. Is it Is it the same referees in in the women's game, or you know what I mean? Is it Is it Is it different week in week out? Is the Is the people doing um, WSL two, WSL one, and, and 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 the mixed around on ability? Yeah. From what I've experienced uh, with West Brom, it tends to just be the, the referees doing that one league. Um, same with the Championship and the top league, uh, the BCL one. So it's not really a mix of them, to be honest. OK. Uh, let's just have a look. What else have we got? I've got a question. Got a go question. on, you go. 
Um, I'd like to obviously speak about obviously your move. You know, I mean, you speak quite uh, quite openly about leaving West Brom and obviously, which which was a club who, was, who, who you, you speak very highly of. So it must have been a must have been a big decision. Then was it to uh, to leave? You know, I mean, obviously you were you were, you were making that step up, which is obviously the, the, probably the reason behind it. But how hard and tough a decision was it to leave? Yeah, it was a tough decision. Um, like the girls there, I won't go to another club and get teammates like that. Um, everybody's there for each other, the players for each other. Yeah, they're a great bunch of girls, but um, I can't fault them at all. But I guess I've done what I've wanted to achieve with West Brom. Um, obviously, winning the double, that was a great experience in my first season there. Um, but now I guess it's time for me to be selfish and get my development what I need. Um, hence why the move have um, come about. And I didn't really question it, to be honest. It was a no-brainer for me. Which is important there, you, you use the word uh, selfish, and I think that's key for me. And I'm not saying you are selfish, I think it's key that you've got to be selfish. You know, within football, yeah. that you, sometimes you only get those openings and those opportunities at, at certain times, and, and if you don't make that decision, then you obviously couldn't have moved until another time. So, you know I mean? You could have, you could have uh, wasted a year, um, your form could have dipped. Um, like you say, you could have got injured. Uh, you, can't, you can't give up an opportunity, which is, uh, which is staring you in the face and, and, and a perfect way to platform how good you are and, and to test yourself against bigger and better players and that's not me yeah, being disrespectful yeah. to West Brom but you're, you're playing against excellent players week in week out at that level you know what I mean and, the, and these are players who, and like I've said earlier and I've seen them on TV some of them that you said Sheffield United I watched Liverpool the other day I know quite a lot of the Durham players I've seen them play that they could easily fit in to um, to WSL1 easily um, yeah. you know what I mean That and, and, and they will Sooner rather than later, and that's individually, collectively, team. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, this season, next season. You know, obviously, it looks like is it Bristol City are really struggling in in WSL one, and yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Because the gulf is quite high, but you you need that that the, you need that experience and that togetherness. You spoke there about about, about West Brom, where you you won the double, and your your teammates were together. You're all pushing the same direction, and that's key moving forward, isn't it? Because you you get a team who gets promoted. It doesn't always work out if uh, if you've got individuals or you're not together as a group because togetherness, team spirit, it can go a long way, can't it? Yeah, yeah. Look, the reason we won um, the double that season is because everybody had the same goal. Everybody was driven and they knew exactly that. Don't get me wrong, it was such a stressful season. I was, I was finishing the season with grey hairs. <laughs> it was mm-hmm. worth it. Um, but yeah, Coventry have, have uh, settled in very, very well. Uh, happy with the move and ready to kick on. We've got a game. Um, next week so does it help come. does it help signing for a team which is um, quite local to your uh, previous club or is that a hindrance you know what I mean obviously you won't know how to move which is yeah. uh, which is important um, but does that obviously cause its own problems because you move to a local a local rival or does that does that not have an issue um, not such I think it helps me uh, better that it's local as well um, I know quite a few of the girls that play there as well I've known about Coventry for a while. Obviously, I've played against them um, in cup games with West Brom as well. Yeah, they're a good bunch and they're going in uh, the right direction. I've had good... You hear everything about different clubs. You hear the good, the bad, but you've got to go into that environment and make your own opinion and see yeah. if it's right for you. I totally um, agree. I totally agree. A little, little question on transfers. Sorry, from uh, just because it fits in with what we're talking about. Reese says, um, uh, "What's it like when you get a transfer in the women's game? Uh, men's, obviously, you have people now who help you find a house, settle down into a new area. What sort of support do the female players get?" Um, it depends if if you have an agent or not. Really, um, so I have an agent. Um, you who helped you get? Who helped you get on that show? By the way, so I will say thank you to, uh, to Joe. So I'll just say that mm-hmm. if she's watching. Yeah. She better be watching. She better be watching. Yeah, so no, no. no. Better be watching. The ignite agency um, helping me on my move. Um, they look at your paperwork, the normal kind of thing. Um, but yeah, as a player, you talk to the manager as well. You get a feel for the team, and ultimately, it's the, the player's decision. So. You spoke there, Fran, about about a user word, agent. You know what I mean, and and uh, we've spoke, say, haven't we, about uh, the bad press that people get. Um, oh yeah, and the bad press that that, that unprecedented. You know what I mean about some some people have done a, a a poor job for people. You know what I mean. We had a, a, a guest on David Cockrell, ex, ex ex blue Birmingham City. That he the minute he signed for Birmingham, that he basically got dropped in a in the centre of Birmingham and told to find. Good luck. See you later. That, that was out. it, and that was he had a that, young and baby was, and a wife as well. Yeah, and that was and that was one of them things. But you know, what I mean, when you 
how important is it to have that right uh, right back in behind you so you can just concentrate on football and pure football and not have to worry about anything else what's around you? Yeah, like having um, the right agent for you, it's kind of like um, having the right best friends next to you, helping you, trusting them, uh, so you can con- concentrate on what you've got to do on the pitch and train. Um, hmm. Yes, you've got to have that connection with them and the trust for them to just sort everything uh, that's not on the pitch out for you whilst you concentrate and train. I totally agree because they can't do anything what 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 you need what, what what you don't want them to do because your 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 main focus is the football and when you cross that white line it's purely down to you to perform isn't it you know what I mean and um and and, and do it yourself you know what I mean but whereas off the pitch you know what I mean that there's so many things that footballers can get help with you know that it's it could be financially it could be uh moving away to a different place it it, it could be uh, transport uh, it it could be just Going out for going out for a, a meal or a holiday or anything it could be anything and, and, and it's, listen there's there's so many good things that uh, that rep- representation gives to you and gives to players I think I think it's so important you know what I mean it's so important to have the have the right one and you spoke there about 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 best friend you know what I mean you use that use that uh, those that terminology and I think it's that's perfect for me because I think it's great that um, uh, that you class it as that because that's what it is isn't it you know what I mean it's someone who you trust and someone that you can rely on when you need them. Uh, and just let your feet do the talking, so to speak. Yeah. Spot on. Spot on. Um, Leslie Coates, we discussed that already. Come on, keep up. You asked about United, uh, Coventry United and Slow Coventry in. City. Come on, mate. Um, Stuart Campbell with at least 16 question marks. So that's really? not, that's not correct no. punctuation again. No. no, and he's being rude now. So, mm. you know what I mean? You can get banned. You can ban him, can't you? I can burn him. I can also put him in time out for a little bit, put him in the corner. No, no, um, don't be he says, me. Uh, Fran, do you come from a football family? Uh, good, good question. No, only my grandparents, like I said, um, my one nan and granddad. Uh, the rest of them, no, they're not really into sports. Um, my one cousin now is a young, young boy. He's into football, but apart from that, no, it's just been me. Did they all encourage you to when you decided you wanted to be a you know be a footballer and pursue it as a as a career? Did they kind of were they all you know encouraging with that and supportive? Was there anyone who within the family who sort of said get a proper job? You get you get more questions of course. Um, yeah, all the time. You've got to fight for you, be the best in the game and then progress, get earning more and whatnot. Yeah, of course, those questions come a, come about. But when you sit down and talk to them as why you're doing this, the angles, um, they will get it in the end. Do you know? Do you know what annoys me about that question? It really bug, it really bugs me, you know, because it's a question that I got asked at school in my. Um, uh, it's like a uh, like a leaving interview or whatever. When I was I think I was fifteen, sixteen. And, uh, and you get asked what you want to be when you're older, and I said I want to be a professional footballer. And then I think the, the lady said, "Yeah, yeah, but." What else do you want to do? Because that won't that won't happen. And I was just like, that, this is, it's just so thanks special, for the encouragement. You know I mean? like, yeah, basically, you know what I mean. That, that that you hear people say it all the time, and I and I probably get it. Every single other person who walked through that door and said the same thing. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I probably get a point because you're sick of hearing it. But um, you know what I mean. If someone's got a dream and an aspiration, you know what I mean. Is it is it their job to to squash it, or is it their job to encourage it and say, right, well, um, who do you play for? Um, where you want to go? What's your aspirations? You know what I mean? Like like fans says about, oh, well, when I'm 16, I want to be here. When I'm 18, I want to do this. When I'm 21, I want to do this. And and it, by then, if things haven't worked out, then maybe I might have to do something else. But give me that opportunity. Yeah. Don't don't squash it at 15 and say, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna do something else because it's yeah. not really it's not really fair, is it? Uh, Reese David Evans says, uh, are all the ladies on full-time contracts or are some of them on part-time contracts in the professional game? So, like, I guess the Championship and the Super League, are they all full-time professionals or is there some which are kind of working other jobs as well? Uh, you'll get in both leagues, the Championship and the League above. You'll still get people, part-time jobs, earning money. Um, mm. You'll still get people training full time, but not being able to financially live off their way. Yeah, have, to have something separately. Um, yeah, but we had I, um, um, we had Charlotte, we had Charlotte on, didn't we? Charlotte Potts on, who plays for Hibernian Ladies, and uh, obviously she moved away to uh, to Scotland, and she's done the same thing. You know, I think they train 
five times, four times a week. You know what I mean? D- different times, Thursday morning, Tuesday night, Monday, uh, various times of the day, different, different times of the day, but obviously they work as well. And it's it's so hard, isn't it? You know what I mean? Because you, you're running two, two things. You're trying to be successful in two different areas because A, you need the money to live because how do you live without any money? Um, and B, you, she's gone there predominantly to play football. And sometimes how can you give it all with that kind of responsibility on your shoulders, physically, mentally tired? It's It's such a difficult thing which people don't get as well, you know? It's it's, yeah. it's 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 very tough. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Um, go on. Sorry, Fran. You, you do have to take a pay cut, really. Um, you got more people doing so much more all the time than what you can do, mm. and you have to do less so you can train. Uh, I guess to chase those dreams. Um, because I was at college and I was training like twice a day. Then I had college in between. Then I had to catch a train for an hour and a half to come back to work quickly. But <sighs> look, if you want to achieve your dreams, you've got to sacrifice mm. these kind of things. Yeah, you've got to do it. I speak to a lot of um, fighters, MMA fighters, um, and the guys who are in cage warriors. A lot of them are, you know, they're professional fighters. They they train full time, but they're also juggling full time jobs, and it's it's difficult. But ultimately, they said exactly the same as what you just said, pretty much word for word. Is if you want to chase your dreams, um, you've got to you know you've got to make sacrifices and you've got to put the hours in. I guess and it doesn't mean. It's going to be easy, uh, and it sounds very tiring. I've got to mm. say, trying to—it's all effectively doing like if you're doing education as well. You could doing like three jobs, isn't you? Because you're doing education, you, football, and then another job on top of that. It's mm. a lot, but it's you've tough. got to do. Got to do what you got to do, yeah, as it were. It's tough. Um, uh, Fran, in your opinion, who is the best female player in the world at the moment? Um. Uh... Good question that it depends i guess um if you're talking about technical physicality but overall i'd say uh lucy bronze or rose lavelle in the usa um, mm. she's got a really good engine about her obviously lucy's um an engine on the wings uh, she's got that physical dominance with the speed um yeah, I've never, I, I, I've hmm. never seen, I've never seen somebody so fit than as Lucy Bronze. You know what I mean? That she plays right back and she's, she's up and down. She's, she's kicking people. She's crossing the ball. She's scoring hmm. goals. It's, it's something that I've, I've never, I've never really witnessed um, from a, from a female player. You know what I mean? And a male player. You know what I mean? That when everyone talks about a fullback, wingback, Cafu for me was the best, uh, best wingback. You know what I mean? The fittest and the fittest and the quickest. You know what I mean? Lucy Bronze is on that. On that mantle, you know what I mean. She's up and down. She must be an absolute manager's dream because you don't need a right winger, from dear. You know what I mean? Because no. <laughs> sometimes a right winger can be in a hindrance because you might as well pack your pack your three centre midfielders and have her up and down. Because mm-hmm. uh, when you've got another another left footer over the other side who does exactly the same thing, by the way, you know what I mean. Your fullbacks can be your outlets. Your fullbacks can be your ones bombing on, and and you yeah. can give that extra centre forward, the extra midfielder, or the extra centre half, and play wing backs, and it can be. It's just perfect, perfect way to play. You know what I mean? But you, you said there, you know what I mean. It's so important to be fit, fit. Um, physically, mentally fit, you know what I mean? But then to be aggressive as well, I think it gives you that edge, you know what I mean? The, the way you yeah. play, the way that you say about uh, that you get stuck in, you win your battles. Uh, it's, it's so important because it makes you stand out as well because you want to win. Everyone wants to win. You're over that white line, you go to training, you go to games. You want to win the tackles, you want to win five aside, you want to win your game, you want to win 11 yeah. side, you want to win on a Saturday. It's all about your three points and and for me, there's no better feeling that you've had an impact on that, even if your passing's been off or something, that it's uh, it's important to, to win your individual battles. Um, I've got have got I've got uh, Go I've got a question. Uh, obviously, something that that we that we can finish off with. Uh, obviously, which will which will go into obviously the national team a little bit. But um, Fran, I want to talk about your your surname. So obviously not personal, but obviously you want to talk about your surname because we had a little brief conversation. Um, uh, before we came on air, um, so can you tell people where it originates from, just so we then before we can dig a little bit deeper. Um, so I'm half Cypriot Greek, so half my dad's side of the family is Cypriot, so I'm from Cyprus. So I've got um, my mom's side is English, obviously in this country. I've got Greek side in this country, and I've still got family abroad in Cyprus as well. So that's where the long term name comes from. So you've got a bit, you've got a mixed bag, then, haven't you? You've got a uh, extremely mixed yeah. bag. So obviously, you know what I mean. Talking about national team because playing for your country is obviously a, a dream and an aspiration. You know what I mean? I, I, I loved it. I was very, very proud of, uh, of, of playing for my country and I, I, I would do it all again if I could. Um, mm. If you had an opportunity to, uh, to represent any country, 
because uh, obviously you, you, you're eligible, I'm guessing, for at least two, if not three. Um, mm. which, uh, which one would it be and why? Uh, England. I think they're just so much more ahead of the game than uh, what Cyprus is um, in terms of development and where they're at. So, yeah, a bit no-brainer, really. So why though? So what, what's uh, what's obviously that uh, you say about development and things? Obviously, um, Phil Neville's obviously leaving. Uh, I'm not sure if they've if they've appointed anybody to take over yet. Um, for, yeah, for who's going yeah, to take over? Neville's head coach. Um, oh, right, okay. Helped, um, win the 2019 the Women's Euros. Um, yeah. And she won our like, head coach in the same year. So yeah, it's a good appointment. Yeah, well, I totally, totally agree, totally agree. And and, and to be fair, where where obviously uh, Mark Sampson took the took the took the girls, and then obviously Phil's took them as well to a to a different a different height. You know, what I mean, I wouldn't say it's probably any 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 bigger than what Mark took them. So I thought Mark took them to a a level which which was obviously phenomenal. You know, what I mean, and obviously he left under a bit of a bit of a cloud, which is obviously disappointing for yeah. for him personally. But I think the job he did was just absolutely fantastic and brought England ladies and women's football to a to a great level. Yeah. Yeah, he's done a great job there. Um, just a shame it's cut short, but I'm sure yeah. um, they'll do well as well in the 2022 Euros. Yeah, and I hope so. I really, obviously, I really do. I say it's been a. I really appreciate your time, Fran. It's been an amazing show. You've answered all the all the questions absolutely impeccably well with uh, with great confidence. And uh, uh, you should do this for a for a hobby, by the way. Get, get your own uh, get your own show with all, all the women's all the women's players on. Tell you. <laughs> No bad get that, idea. Get that, get that brummy accent on. I tell you, get that brummy accent on the on the podcast. <laughs> Spot on. Yeah, no, thank. <laughs> ah, it's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Fran. Really appreciate your your time. Thank you to everyone who's uh, tuned in. Thank you. To, there was loads of people on YouTube, at, uh, particularly for the first hour and fifteen. There was. Well over 150 at one point, so that's a, a good good numbers for us on a Monday night. I appreciate everyone who sent in questions or comments as ever. Um, big thank you to Black Diamond Sports uh, for all their support. And of course, Bespoke Financial. And again, check out uh, their, their services they offer. They're giving away a free will worth up to £140 with any new policy that's taken out. And uh, with the way the world is at the moment... I would uh, highly recommend them because I think uh, we could all do with a bit of that, a bit of security. And uh, they are top draw. Um, if you missed it yesterday, we dropped an, another mental health in sports show uh, with former Motherwell and Hearts winger Kevin Twaddle. And I have to say, it was phenomenal. Kevin was unbelievable. Um, really, he opened up about not just his issues with gambling um, and addiction and mental health, but he also opened up about a subject which you don't hear a lot of men talk about and that and that's miscarriages um he discussed how his uh, him and his partner had suffered or his partner had suffered uh, five miscarriages in a quite a short space of time um and i just really appreciate not just him but all the players including andy who give me so much of their time for that series um, and it's not over yet we've got some some good ones coming up but uh check them out on the youtube channel with all the other series and shows we will be back friday for the championship show and boy oh boy is there some stuff to talk about on that uh, you'll, have a, you'll, someone... have a, you'll have a smile on your face no mate i still got plenty to say <laughs> star still find something to moan about don't you worry but uh james costley he only put one comment in the whole chat today uh, i think he might be working um he said forest away third round and rob boyle said we are going up we are going up whereas last week it was all, all doom and gloom Yes, FA, FA, but, Cup, FA Cup third round draw, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they had... Uh, Middles, we got Brentford. I don't know Birmingham got Fran. I don't know if... if uh, uh, but obviously, I didn't, I didn't know until tonight that you supported. Obviously, the Blues. Obviously, they've got one of my ex-managers. They've got a few, a few ex-Middlesbrough players who I know really well. In, in I love Brent, watching Birmingham, mate. I know, well, they've got loads of ex-Middlesbrough players. Jukovic, right. they've got loads. They've got loads. Middlesbrough reserves. We'll call them Middlesbrough reserves, Fran, just for you. Nah, <laughs> they, they're much better than that. They've got loads of really good young players. Um... They got Man City. Who did Birmingham? Mid. Yeah. Pointless without any fans. Man City. Uh, they got Man City. And uh, do you say you don't know who Borough got? Yeah, they got Brentford away. They got Brentford. Mm. Brentford. So go. Oh, Fran, let me uh, finish off with a, with a quick question. Go on. Sorry. When you, when when we size just mentioned there about uh, young players at Birmingham. So, uh, what was your what was your initial thoughts? Because we've had a bit of a giggle. Uh, what was your initial thoughts on Jude Bellingham retiring his shirt or the club retiring Jude Bellingham's shirt? 
it's a bit it's a bit much to be honest. It's uh, but but, but I don't I don't know if you follow him on social media. He took it amazingly well. He was amazing. I don't know if you uh, his, his Twitter. He was, was incredible. Yeah, it was absolutely yeah, amazing. Yeah. And, the, and the way yeah, that he took it, the way he handled it. it. I don't know if he does it himself, by the way, but if he does, he certainly went up in my estimation. I thought he was absolutely first class because clubs were getting involved and fans yeah, obviously yeah. got involved. But, but it was the clubs who got involved and he just absolutely just took a few clubs to the cleaners and just handled it really well, really mature. Yeah, yeah. And the way that he's gone over to Germany and played... He's, he's doing very well. Big, yeah, like a... Yeah. Like a fish to water, so I think he's, he's he, on on and off the pitch. He's massively gone up in my estimation. Seventeen, ridiculous, ridiculous, ludicrous, mate. Yeah, um, ridiculous. Fran, thank you ever so much. Really appreciate your time, Andy as ever, top man. It's my favourite part of the week, mate. And yeah. uh, we'll be Got back it. Friday. Join us. I'll even crack a smile. But until then, I bid you a, a farewell. Have a good Cheers, week, guys. peeps. Thank you. My mummy and daddy have been talking about life insurance. It sounds like something to protect my brother and me, but I don't really understand. Then my auntie Louise told mummy about Bespoke Financial Teesside. She said they're a local company who helped her with her life insurance. Mummy got in touch and because they're based locally, a man called Darren was able to come to our house. He was really friendly. Darren stayed for a cup of tea and made it all really easy to understand. He said that life insurance will protect our home and family if anything bad were to happen. Like if mummy or daddy got sick, then we'd get enough money to take care of us and our house would be paid for so it wouldn't get taken away. After an hour, Darren said goodbye and mummy and daddy seemed a lot happier. Once it was all sorted, we could all relax and watch a film together as a family. I don't know why they didn't do it sooner.